That's right. Right, uh, thank you, uh, everybody, turn up tonight, and welcome to Stratford District Council's Planning East Committee. Uh, my name is Andy Crump, and I will be chairing tonight's meeting. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to determine the planning merit of the applications before us. Um, hopefully, everybody's got their phones on and silent or turned off, because um, there's nothing worse than somebody speaking, then the Great Escape team tune comes on, and they've lost their flow. Oh, that's right. I'm going to see if we have two tight. You can the brain. So again, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's catch the catch the barns. We're not on about your lamb line this time on this occasion. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Um, so again, uh, thank you. So I'd just like to introduce the top table. And on my right, we have Liz Jabovska, Committee Services. Mason Ash Legal Services. Karen Tate, I'm the team leader, Planners East. In my role as an impartial advisor to the committee, I can clarify any planning issues that arise. Doing so, I'm bound by the Code of Professional Conduct of the Royal Town Planning Institute. Planning committee members are not bound by the case officer's recommendation or by oral advice. Thank you. Matthew Coyne, Planning Officer. Joe Burrett, Planning Officer. Thank you very much. Uh, any item number one on the agenda? Any items? For, any apologies for absence? Yes, Chairman, thank you. We've got apologies from Councillor Kendall and Councillor Saint. Thank you. Okay, then. Is that, is that a bit better? <laughs> it might be a bonus for you, Council Fieldy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be one of those meetings tonight. Any dis disclosure of members' interests? Councillor Parry. Chairman, I've received some information regarding the first application. I have looked at it, but it is, it, I've, I've come with um, fresh mind, yeah. an open mind. I think we'll have. Councillor O'Donnell. Um, Chairman, as ward member, I will be speaking. Um, in the first application and therefore stepping down. Thank you. Councillor Ferdin. I got a, <coughs> an email from, um, I think, one of the neighbours with photographs which I haven't opened. So. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think we all did as well. Yeah, I haven't opened one, but thank you for that. Um, item number three, the minutes of the meeting are held on the 16th of May. Um, I'm sorry you've all read and perused them. And uh, if you're happy to uh, approve them, I'll, I'll sign them at the end of the meeting. Thank you. All right, before we start, um, we've got two applications tonight. Um, there have been no updates for either application. So rather than print that and waste 20 papers, 20 sheets of paper, um, I thought I'd just give you a verbal update. So hopefully you're all happy with that. All right, and now we'll move on to... Agenda item number four, which is application 18 slash 01183, very Laylet, Bambi Road, Pillars and Priors, and its variation of condition two of application reference 16 slash 033204, condition two, alterations to elevation, including built parapet heights, as shown on drawing 313 slash. 06.1 part retrospective and our presenting officer is Matthew Coyne. Thank you Matthew. Thank you Chairman. So the, the application site uh, is in Pillarton Priors um, situated just off the main road um, indicated by the black dot in the middle of the screen there. Um, so the, the property is known as Laylet um, and is situated between the properties of the Gables and Old, road, old Rose Cottage. Um, so, planning permission was granted um, in 2016 uh, for a replacement dwelling, um, and as you can see from the site um, aerial imagery there, uh, development has commenced in terms of demolition, um, and they've substantially now completed uh, the property. 
Um, so the, the application seeks a variation of um, conditions uh, in terms of the approved plans um, from the original application. Um, so I've, I've got the approved drawings in front of you there. Um, they're the ones that were approved under application 16033204. full. Um, and the next slide here shows the um, current drawings before you tonight. Um, so the the changes between the two um, include an increase of the parapet heights by about 30 to 40 centimetres um, and they've added a th two to three degree pitch um, to the front um, sort of flat roof elements. Um, so I'll just show you the two again. Um, so that was the approved um, and that's currently before you tonight. So the, the d uh, dwelling is currently under construction. Um, and that's the latest site photos. Um, as you can see, the um, parapet walls are situated either side of the main entrance and then one either side of the property. Um, and again, the flat roof elements have now got the, the slight pitch on them. Uh, that's just another photo. So this is the view from uh, the driveway to the gables um, looking towards the, the dwelling um, and the parapet wall along the side boundary there. And this is a view taken from the neighbor's garden looking towards the parapet. Um, so this is as built, um, which is, like I say, 30 to 40 centimeters taller than what was approved. Um, so in summary, um, I think the, the main issue before you tonight is uh, whether or not there's an impact in terms of residential amenity on the neighboring occupiers um, for the reasons set out in the report, um, starting on page three. Um, and pr predominantly on pages eight and nine, um, the applications are uh, recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. We'll uh, come to our first speaker, which is Councillor Ian Greenall from Pulitan Prize Parish Council. Hi, Councillor Greenall. I'm sure you've been here quite a few times, so. Well, thank you. Uh, three minutes as usual, and will you want uh, a warning with 30 seconds to go? Thank you. Thank you. Far away. It is interesting to note the reasons given in the applicant's planning statement for the increase in height to that approved. If these, go, if these are genuine reasons, then why did they not submit an application before construction, rather than as a result of a visit by a planning enforcement officer? As well as the parapets, there appear to be a number of discrepancies between the building as it currently stands and the approved plan. If you look at photo one, where, where is the door on the west elevation? The roof line also appears different to the approved north elevation. So is this building accurate to the approved plans? We have our doubts. We disagree with the officer's interpretation of policies CS5, CS20 and AS10 this whole application depends on your view of harm and impact. In application 15018014, the planning officer acknowledged that the scheme proposed at that time would cause some harm to Old Rose Cottage. The District Council's submission to the planning inspector stated, overbearing impact on the amenity of Old Rose Cottage by virtue of the size, bulk and mass in close proximity to the boundary. The inspector agreed and dismissed the appeal. In his report for the approved application, the officer implied that because the height of the single story would be three metres, he said, I acknowledge that there will be some minor harm, but not be sufficient to warrant the refusal of planning permission. Bear in mind that the plans have been amended after negotiation instigated by the owner of Old Rose Cottage. Without this agreement, the parish council would have maintained its objection, so the application would have been heard by this committee rather than just a delegated report. However, the construction has not followed the agreed and approved plans, so the concessions made have been ignored. Again, the planning officer admits there would be some additional impact. How much impact does it need to make before it becomes excessive? He might not think it is detrimental through loss of light, but the solid walls are clearly visible from the patio of Old Rose Cottage, and therefore impacts the visual amenity that policy CS5 looks to maintain. Policy CS20 states that a replacement dwelling should not be visually intrusive and significantly larger than the dwelling it replaces. The additional height makes this building even more intrusive and impacts the residential amenity of Old Rose Cottage, 
so should be refused against policies CS5, CS20 and AS10. Seconds. We feel that any building should match the approved plans in all areas, so we urge you to refuse this application and the Council take action to ensure works are undertaken to make the building match the approved plans. Brilliant. Great time of day. <coughs> Any questions for the Parish Councillor? Councillor Barnes. Yeah, I assume that we're here because it hasn't been built as per plan. What is the difference in the height then? Okay, do you think we'll uh, do that for, for the officer? Because the officer's got the... I th Whatever you want, Chairman, yes. I think uh, it's probably, probably safe. I think Councillor Greenlaw has got some idea, but... Yeah, but it was just that the, the speaker did mention the difference in the height and... Yeah. I think we'll go back to the, the officer. I think it was 30 to 40 centimetres to, to the eaves, but again, we'll, we'll seek proper clarification in a minute. Any, any other questions? No. Thank you, Councillor Greenall. You've got, got off lightly tonight. We move on to our next speaker, which is Mr. Peter Byram. They can do either. Either is whichever is most comfortable. No, not a problem at all. Take your time. We've got plenty of time. It uh, doesn't get dark till about <laughs> quarter past half past ten tonight, so we're okay. Right. Right, far away. You've got three minutes. Um, would you like uh, a warning shot at uh, about with 30 seconds to go? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So, yeah, feel free to start when you're ready. All right. My involvement with the enforcement officer stems from an excessively high wall to a single-story bedroom block erected on my western boundary directly opposite my patio area, which is my main amenity. There was nothing there hitherto. The additional wall height has to be seen in the context of my long established patio being 1.7 metres below ground level of Laylet, and the same applies to the floor of my house. There's then 3.39 metres of structure to add to that. To use the language of the core strategy, the wall is not sensitive to its site and surroundings and causes me considerable harm as the planning inspector anticipated in his report on an earlier failed appeal dated the 7th of September 2016. My son and I met Mr. and Mrs. Cowan on the 6th and 26th of November 2016 and agreed some changes to the plans and confirmed the arrangements with handshakes all round. This included a wall height of three metres for the bedroom block. Any changes made after our meeting on 26th of November are non, not notified to me and are not acceptable. The height should be reduced to the original three metres. As a matter of record, Councillor Penny Ann O'Donnell visited my house on the 19th of June 2018 and seemed quite perturbed by what she found there. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Within time as well, so we're doing well tonight. Um, just for clarity, Mr. Barrow, can I make sure it's Rose Cottage you live in? Yeah, I thought it was. I was just making sure. Um, any questions for Mr. Barrow? No, I'm saying must have been so, so self-explanatory in the pictures of a set of thousand words. You've uh, done very well. Thank you very much. So our next speaker is Mr. James Cohen. Mr. Cohen, you've got uh, six minutes when you're ready. Uh, and oh, uh, we'll, we'll see again. If you're, you are in full flow, and uh, we'll give you a warning shot after okay, sure with 30 seconds to go. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for letting me speak this evening. 
Uh, it seems there have been a number of mentions back to inspector's comments on a previously and ultimately refused planning scheme. I do ask that you please disregard these comments as they are completely irrelevant and refer to a different design. The refused scheme was for a two-storey dwelling, not the mostly single-storey building we have now. And when impact to neighbouring amenity was being discussed, we were talking about a far taller wall height than the 339 centimetres we are talking about now, and uh, considerably closer to the boundary as well, I believe. Um, if you have reviewed the original and granted application, including the amendments, you will note there were never any changes to the parapet wall heights, nor were, there ever any, nor were they ever mentioned in any consultations or comments. To my mind, they were not contentious at all, which is why I firmly believe, had we had these parapet walls drawn at the correct height originally, the application would have been granted in exactly the same way that it was. The issue has simply come from not understanding the demands of the insulated panel products we were using for the flat roof. The specific issues were A, the panels finally chosen were slightly thicker than first thought because we had decided on a better insulated product for environmental reasons. B, the supplier amended their initial requirements and informed us that we needed a ventilation void above the, their flat roofing panels, something we'd not considered. C, they could not be laid flat and needed at least two degrees forward to prevent condensation and moisture buildup, something else we didn't know of the product, unfortunately. And D, the beam that was then required to support them had to be larger than first thought. These four reasons alone meant the four parapet heights lifted during the construction design and the net effect was the 39 centimetres increase you see as built now. Uh, it is only with hindsight that I've come to learn that this happened. Um, I did read uh, a guide on permitted developments for single storey building extension. When a planning application is not required, which allows heights of up to three metres when within two metres of a boundary fence and four metres when further than two metres away. We are 1.75 metres away from the boundary of Old Rose Cottage and between 1.7 and 1.2 away from the boundary of the Gables. Whilst the permitted development for extensions is clearly not applicable in this case, I do believe it goes some way to show how acceptable a height of 339 centimetres is in planning terms. I also note that the neighbour in the Gables who is actually closest to this wall has decided to make no objection to the minor change in height. During our planning application, we met with the owner of Old Rose Cottage to come to a mutual agreement on what both parties would be happy to support. As a result of this meeting, we timber clad a large portion of the wall facing Old Rose Cottage at quite a large increase in cost, purely for this neighbour's benefit, which was made at their request. At the same time, there was an amendment made to the length of one of these walls in which we extended it one metre further forwards on the Old Rose Cottage side, which this neighbour actually suggested and supported. This amendment to the submitted plans to increase the size of the wall was not met with any dissatisfaction. In fact, the only neighbour that has complained about this issue now then wrote in support of the application and the amendment to enlarge the wall towards their property. We're not developers. We're a family from Oxall who decided to build our own home in the local area. We moved in with parents to do it, and here we are five years later, still living with them now and also with our two young children. I do sincerely hope we can put this issue to bed this evening because we would all really like to focus on moving in in the next couple of months. As I've already said, I'm 100% convinced there would have been no difference in opinions or decisions with this application had it been drawn at the correct height of 3.4 metres from the start. I thank you for your time. Right, thank you very much. So, catch the podium, good evening. Thank you, good evening. Um, can you just advise when you were aware that the height of the, of the wall was going to exceed the original 3, three metres and, and what you actually... Measured after it was measured? Yeah, well, the call from the, or the email notification from the enforcement officer was the first time I was aware. Right, okay. So At the which point we measured everything. Right, okay. Thank you. Councillor Fielding. Can, can we go back to the photograph from Rose Cottage? What's the material on the side of your, side of your building? It's rendered. It's rendered? It's, yeah, it's rendered, yeah. So, right. I've got one question, Mr. Cohen. You talk about the insulated panels causing yeah. the problems. I think uh, the supply amended. Yeah, it was the, the panels, yeah. Um, can't be laid flat and the two to three degree slope, etc., and the beam being bigger or thicker or higher than meters to bottom. When did you became, become aware of that? Um, well, uh, those things will have gone on throughout the design mm -hmm. stage. Um, I'm unhappy with the architect in, in not letting me know that there was any changes to designs. I, these are things that went on sort of past me. Uh, I became aware that these things had happened at the enforcement officer's uh, notification. Um, in terms of 
a construction design, I made the decision on the thicker panels. Um, my naivety, I didn't consider what that would do. Um, I, I, so uh, it, it came to note that that lifted the house at that point. So it, I suppose I didn't give it any thought at the time yeah. of the decision. Okay, I think you've answered that quite yeah. well. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Catch the Barnes. Can I ask the gentleman how high the building is at the present? You may. And then we can ask the officer as well. Uh, the playing officer is 3.3 uh, to 3.4 metres. Oh, we've measured it. I think it's 339 centimetres. Is the house built? Brilliant. There's no further questions. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cohen. Could you just turn the uh, turn the mic off, please? Thank you. Right. Now, well, any points of clarification for the officer, which is the. Oh, sorry, I can't slow down. Oh, you were hiding there in the corner. <laughs> and we'll move on to can't slow down. Peter, built. Peter, can't slow down. Can't slow down all the hidden. Yeah. 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 Sorry about that, can't slow down. <laughs> I've been told off. No, it was just the, okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, you've got five minutes, Phil. Whenever you're ready, we'll look forward to it. Thank you. Well, Chair and Committee, um, I think this is a, a difficult situation, and I'm relieved that I don't have to vote on this. Um, I strongly believe that this is site-sensitive, and the Committee would benefit from a site visit. Um, there are three main areas to consider. Do you believe the applicants have fully respected the guidance of the core strategy? Does the increase in height um, actually have an overbearing impact on the old Rose Cottage, which is why I recommend a site visit for you to determine, because they are really unusual level differences between the two plots and buildings, which is something that was picked up by the inspector who did refuse the previous application. And whether you take note of his report or not, he mm -hmm. did um, draw attention to the fact that the difference between the levels in the plots was of concern. So it's, it's worth bearing that in mind. And finally, what precedent are you setting if you allow applicants to, once permission is granted, tweak away, really without any concerns for the neighbouring occupants? You know, we have a strict guidance from the course strategy, and is it acceptable that the guidance is ignored in any fashion, without discussion, in the hope they're simply not noticed or you can get away with it, whether the applicant was blameless or not? That's, that's he's in charge of his team that's in charge of the build. We look to CS9, and that says to ensure a high quality of design, the development will be sensitive. Now, sensitivity is a key word here because sensitivity means you're tactful, careful, thoughtful and diplomatic and delicate in your negotiations. And I would suggest that this situation is anything but sensitive with regards to how Mr. Brimer has been, has been treated. Um, it also recommends that you make the best use of on-site assets as well as public views and vistas and not harm existing ones. And CS9 goes on to suggest that the involvement of local residents and communities in the design of development which affects their locality is critical to achieving good design. Well, the way in which Mr. Byram's good faith in a handshake and a gentleman's agreement regarding the adaptations he agreed to indicate that his contributions and involvement meant nothing. Yet he looks out on the consequences of his good faith in human decency, sadly, on a daily basis. His patio, again, as was noted by the inspector, is his main private amenity space. As he recovers from his stroke, his patio and garden should be a sanctuary for relaxation for him and not a constant source of irritation and stress. Looking at CS5, landscape and visual impacts, the proposals include an assessment of the likely visual impacts on the site's immediate and wider settings. And I question how fully this has been assessed with the impact on the patio of Old Rose Cottage, as you can see from the photos. Um, the scale of development should also, according to CS5, be appropriate to its immediate surroundings. The location and the extent of the development would not have an unnecessarily harmful impact on the surrounding landscape and setting of the development. Simply because the neighbours on the other side haven't complained doesn't mean it hasn't had an impact on, on how their house is situated now. Then we look to AS10, and it states that developments must minimise the impact upon occupiers and users of existing properties in the area. And sadly, the Laylet looks like the wrong house on the wrong plot now. It also advises us that replacement dwellings, subject to its scale and design, should not cause inappropriate harm to the character of the area or neighbouring properties, and I would argue that this now does. They're talking about saying it's 30, you know, so many centimetres. It's the difference in the levels of the plots that makes it quite, you know, obtrusive now to Old Rose Cottage. 
Um, CS20 advises that a replacement dwelling will be well sited in relation to existing site and buildings and not visually obtrusive, I ask you to look at the photos, or significantly larger than the building it replaces, and then it is overbearing in relation to the old rose cottage. The planning inspector, when refusing the previous application, advised that the increase in height, whilst relatively modest, would be accentuated for the occupiers of Old Rose Cottage and its patio area by a significantly higher ground level on which the proposed building would be set. So again, it's worth visiting the site. Now, he concluded that the development would cause material harm to the living conditions of the occupants of Old Rose Cottage, and it would be contrary to the objectives of paragraph 17 of the NPPF, which seeks to ensure high quality design and protect the immunity of adjoining occupiers. Now, if we're being asked to disregard the inspector's report, as the applicant has done, I would ask you to disregard the facts and figures he provided because he admitted that the distance to the boundary was not relevant to actually their, their application. It, it fell just below, didn't it? It was below two metres. Um, and sadly, the applicant um, doesn't know how the committee would have voted if the parapet walls had been drawn to the right height. He doesn't have a crystal ball. So I would urge you to go against the officer's recommendations on this. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor O'Donnell. Any questions for the Ward Member? Councillor Parry. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Donnell, thank you for that. Um, I haven't been to the site, obviously looked on the patio, um, but the, there is also part of the house behind the parapet wall, um, which from the photographs looks quite a bit higher. Can you confirm having been to the site? Is it higher? Because I know flat the roof. applicant made some concern about, because it's a west facing, it's obviously concerned with the sun setting in the west. I just want to get a bit of a feel that if, if the, it might be for the officers to, to, but there is a higher part than the actual wall sitting behind the wall. So the sun would hit that first before it hit the wall. Could you just give me some comments on that, please? Well, definitely that the area behind the, the parapet wall is, is higher. Um, and when you go to the end of the garden at Old Rose Cottage, it's really quite um, intrusive. And as you drive up and park at Rose Cottage, it's the first thing you actually notice. So it is the parapet wall um, has obviously come further than I think the, um, the residents were expecting and is higher. And because it's higher as well, another thing to bear in mind is that there is a window that can look into the, um, the patio. So it's just, I know it's a, it seems like a tiny amount of a difference in a wall height, but given the change in the levels of the plots, it makes a big difference. And it's a lot, when, you, when you're standing in the garden, it looks a lot larger than that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a modern contemporary design. It's obviously taken a lot of thought, but unfortunately, this rise in um, the heights is, does have a big impact. Councillor Fairley. Is one of the objections the colour of the wall that overlooks Rose Cottage. It seems very obtrusive, a very white, stark colour. Is that something that's caused the problem? Um, I'm not sure. I think that's probably a question for the um, residents. I don't think I can answer that, though, Councillor Fielding. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't... Yeah, I think it was to do with the ridge height rather than actual colour of the, um, the render. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think the colour was mentioned in the, uh, it was to do with the ridge height, wasn't it? And um, not uh, from, from <coughs> sorry, excuse me, by both the parish council and the objector. So I don't think the, the colour of the, the render was uh, particularly concerned. Um, but again, we can ask the officer uh, when we go to points of clarification. Uh, yeah, I was wondering indicate? when the oh. ward member had been on site, whether there had been a comment made by the owner of Rose Cottage. Okay, that's fine, yeah. No, I think yeah, that, that's not, a fair question. No, there wasn't, Councillor Fielding. It was just that it is obtrusive, but I, I can see the lines you're going along there. Yeah. Councillor Barnes, did you indicate earlier, or were you just waving to me? No, I Did you say you would like this to see this site? I think it would be really useful, yeah, Councillor okay, Barnes. I'm asking you, did you say that? Yes. Yeah. Right. I think... That's it. No further questions. Thank you, Councillor O'Donnell. And we'll go to points for clarification. Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. I wonder whether the, um, Matthews, you can just give some indication. On the height of the wall, that looks as though there's some form of overflow or some sort of 
pipe. I would just like to have a bit of a feel um, where the difference in height would be on, on, on the photograph. And would it be, a, I'm assuming because 39, or whatever it is, uh, 39 centimetres, would that feature above that pipe element? 16 inches, yeah. I like thinking old, can't think in centimetres. Thank you, yeah. I, c I can't say for definite where it falls on that wall, but it would be roughly where that, feet, that sort of uh, out pipe would be. Um, I'll go back to the, um, the side elevations there, so you can see where the existing um, out pipe hopper is on the, the down pipe of that elevation. That was what was approved, um, and that's what's now there. So it is um, here. So obviously, obviously the plans aren't 100 percent scale, um, but it, it, the, the, the new hopper is slightly below where the, the height increase has come from, so it'd be roughly where that downpipe is. Just above the hedge line. Can you put the mic on, please? Sorry, it wasn't my turn, but I said well, just, mm. just above the hedge line. Yeah, yeah I believe so, yeah. Councillor Barnes. I could ask what the difference between the planning permission and, the, and what we have here in height is. Thank you, yeah. I think um, it's, it's very difficult to measure 100% from the plans um, due to the thickness of the, uh, of the lines on the plans, but it, it is about 30 to 40 centimetres, possibly closer to the 40 um, centimetre mark. Mr Parry, did you want to come back? Yes, I'd just like some clarification on the higher hedge and whose boundary that is in. Is that part of the boundary of the Laylets or is it part of, an, of Rose Cottage? And how high is that hedge? And I'm just trying to think about comparisons from the highest part of the hedge because it looks similar to, but it could just be from where the photograph is taken, it looks a similar height. But it would be helpful to just to have some indication as to how high that hedge is. Thank you. Yeah, d again, I don't have any exact measurements of the hedge itself. Um, I have got some photos um, of further into the garden. So the hedge is on, on um, Old Rose Cottage side. Um, so that there is a bit of level change across the site as well, so that this bit of the land is slightly higher than the patio area. Um, that bit there, there. So the garden is set to the, to the left-hand side of that photo, um, looking sort of back towards the, the property in the road. Councillor Brown? I'd like to know what time of day the photograph was taken. Um, I can't 100% say on that one, I'm afraid, sorry. Yeah. Well, I think it's important because the sunlight on the patio area, is it, a, is it morning, is it afternoon, or? I, I Honestly, I can't, I wouldn't be able to say from memory. Um, th that, that's the orientation of the site in terms of um, the gardens are completely south facing. Um, so in terms of light impacts, this will only have an impact sort of later in the afternoon, um, if at all. Um, due to when the sort of sun comes around. Um. Councillor Fowley. Do you have um, a block plan showing where the house is in relation to the... Because there's no sort of plan that indicates where that is and how far back it is within the site. Yeah, that, that's... Well, I haven't got a full block plan of the entire site, but this is the... Um, this is the floor plan that shows the neighbouring properties just coming into the side of the images there. Um, that's, that only shows really the gables. Um, it doesn't really show the, the neighbouring property um, of the old Rose Cottage. Uh, but the patio would be um, to the top right-hand side of, of your screen. So we don't know where the back boundary is as far as that plan is concerned because it, it's the, ga uh, the gables that would object more, I would have thought, but is that is that the case? Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm just concerned about the relevance of this really, Councillor Fielding, because 
We're on about. Both cottages set very much further forward. But we're on about the height, aren't we? And this is the back boundary. Is, is I don't think that really impacts on the back boundary. But there was a there was a previous slide where it's actually got the locations or, or something. Could you just go back on that one, Karen? Was there one? Yes. Chair, can I refer, yeah. refer committee also to the um, to the map that's sitting on the um, agenda, page 11, um, which shows you the position in relation to both the Gables and Old Rose Cottage. I would remind committee that planning permission was granted for the for the development in this location, we are, we are, you're dealing specifically with alterations in terms of the parapet walls. So um, discussions, obviously, in relation to the siting of the of the development, are now we're now past that point that that the development has planning permission for the house in this position. Thank you, Karen. That's very helpful. Um, I'll give, you, I'll give you and Matthew a little break a minute. I'll ask Mesa about the presidents uh, Councillor, Councillor O'Donnell referred to. Shall we get precedent? Um, sorry, we get retrospective applications all the time. It doesn't set a precedent in my view, although I'm not saying that an applicant may use it against the council when making a decision, but um, in my view, it, it's not applicable. Thank you. And I've got a couple of points for Matthew. Um, again, Councillor O'Donnell touched on several points, CS5, AS10, CS20, basically regarding overbearing, not very intrusive, replacement building, minimise, etc. Did you pick up any of those? Do you think you could come back on those? Yeah, I think they're all taken to, into account in my, um, in my report. Um, a lot of those policies are relating to the, the replacement dwelling, and, and like Karen says, the principle of development here has been established um, so really when we're assessing this application we need to be considering whether or not the increase in parapet heights um, would lead to any to any con um, sort of conflict with those policies um, and I, I don't think they do in this instance really. thank you very much right any further questions should we uh, move on to the debate okay it's the parry Nobody else has started, so I, I think I will. Um, I think first and foremost, I, d I do understand um, and sympathise with um, the occupier of Rose Cottage, but balancing that against, I feel the owner, um, this is not something that was done purposely. Um, and, I, and I think where I'm coming from, um, there is a high hedge, there is a high hedge that well, it's certainly higher than the existing hedge. Um, whilst there is some harm, I do not see the harm as being substantial by an extra 39 centimetres. Um, and I think if it, if it, if it went to appeal, um, it, would, it would be allowed anyway. Um, and therefore, whilst I have every sympathy with the occupiers at Rose Cottage, I shall be going with the officer's recommendation for grant. Thank you. Any further comments from Councillor Barnes? Oh yes, looking at it, it's understand that you know it's, it's a long history of not wanting a building there. They've got one, they've not built it just as it should, but it does appear that it's only marginally wrong compared with the actual full height. Um, and like the last speaker, I don't think we can win on appeal. I have sympathy for them, and it isn't the sort of thing I would want to sit and look at. But uh, I, would, I would like a condition, if we had to approve it, that the render is of, uh, of, of a, if you like, a rural look, a, a Cotswold look, or, or a, a different colour, uh, to uh, more in keeping with the rural surroundings. Yeah, the Fielding. I must say, I go along with what Councillor Barnes has said. Um, it is very stark, um, and uh, I think a toning it down would make a big difference. Um, but I'm 
quite happy to go along with the uh, um, officer's recommendation. It, with, with that put into the clause. Is, uh, is that a proposal? Chris Harley. Yes, I'll make a proposal. Councillor Barnes, hold on a second. Could you spell in a second? Is that condition reasonable? Can we come back on this? Um, if we can go back to the photographs. As you'll see, the, the um, building is a, a white render across the majority of it. Um, if you're seeking to introduce a new colour into, into one wall only, obviously that will has a potential for impacting on the rest of the building in terms of you'll have a different colour to one wall as opposed to the rest of the building. Um, the other point that I'd make is that white is, or this may be off-white, is the colour that is usually used to give the maximum amount of reflection back back um, in daylight. So whilst I appreciate the, the colour may seem stark, it, it does actually, generally it will improve the amount of light and the feeling of, of lightness um, when viewed from, particularly when viewed, viewed from the patio. Um, I'm not quite sure what, what alternative colours you would use um, that weren't, that could, didn't also need to be very light in colour. So you're basically saying, Karen, that another colour could potentially reduce the reflective nature of the light, etc., and also there's the impact on the actual design, uh, the actual colour for the rest of the building, in other words, not in keep. Jay, yeah. yes, you've summed that up rather better than I did, I think it's... <laughs> Councillor Barnes. Mr. Chairman, we're looking at from where we are, the people in the house will not be looking at that wall. We have houses and we've just had an application with the officers and gone through it all. We've got um, some Cotswold render, some ironstone render, and it looks substantially better than white. And I think that uh, it would make very little difference to the house if this particular sighting from the neighbours was in an ironstone or a Cotswold type colour render to make it applicable to the area that we are now looking. Councillor Parry. I'm quite happy to propose that. Please go back to Councillor Parry. Chair, um, I think the, the weather conditions of the day need to be taken into consideration because, if it, because it's a bright sunny day and blue sky, the white clearly stands out. But if the day was a grey, cloudy day, that white wouldn't look as bright and standing out um, and uh, my personal view is I don't think it, it makes any difference on the impact on the patio and I think if you were to take the same picture on a, on a very on a typical English summer day which is unrare, very rare to be bright blue I don't believe that white wall would look quite so bright Everything in the picture looks bright because it's su a sunny day. Well, I'm going to have to be careful about the wall, the conditions that are in the picture because they could appear like a mistake. Yeah. I can say, uh, um, Mr. Nash has just reminded me that we need to make sure that our conditions are not unreasonable. So if we do agree with this condition, uh, the opponent, uh, so the applicant could actually potentially appeal against an unreasonable condition. So I think that's another point we need to take into consideration. So can we just have a reminder of your proposal then, Councillor Barnes, please? Can we have a reminder, please, of your proposal? is, I'm going to say we're not in a Cotswold. Well, I managed to do it in my, my area yeah. quite successfully, so yeah. I don't see why there isn't any reason that um, the man will be sitting out on the sunny days, not when it's raining, and as far as I'm concerned, it's something that I wanted to put forward, and I'm quite happy to do so. Councillor Brown. 
obviously don't say anything because I agree with all the other people up until they said about this condition. Um, I'm happy to go with the officer's recommendation as it stands without a condition to paint the wall. Uh, if I've got a seconder, that's what I will propose. Councillor Barnes meant to first bill. Okay, the Councillor Barnes is then chair. Unless it, if somebody seconds. Yeah, it is. Okay, I've been advised that we need to go with Councillor Barnes. Is, have we got a seconder for that? No, it looks like that. <laughs> and we'll go to the next proposal, which is Councillor Brains. And have we got a seconder for that? So, Councillor Parry, thank you. So, we'll now go to the vote on Councillor Brains' proposal. All those in favour? Three chairman. Any against? Any abstentions? Two chairman. So that's carried. Yeah, council resolves to grant application. Oh, I don't wait for 18 slash 01183 slash Verley. Thank you. Right then, uh, move on to the next item on the agenda. Councillor Fielding, Councillor Barnes, are we ready? Good, good, thank you. So we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is 18 slash 00425 FUL, Sheldon Bosley Hub, Pitaway Avenue, Ships and Non-Star, erect new single storey modular building for use as nursery. And the presenting officer on this is Joe Brook. Thank you, Chair. The application, reference 18 slash 0425 full, is situated on the northwestern edge on, of Shipton on Star. The application site, marked out in red, lies to the southeastern edge of an area of hard standing last used as tennis courts by the Sheldon Bosley Community Hub, which itself is located on the western edge of the built up area boundary of Shipton on Star. This is now a shot of the proposed application with a site marked out in red. The site is accessed from Pitway Avenue, which is Pitway Avenue just here, onto a private road onto the Sheldon Bosley Hub. The Sheldon Bosley Hub, which is this large building you see before you, is situated to the north of the site and is a social enterprise community building uh, with a parking area equating to 1,760 square metres. To west of the application site is a ships and style bowls green, which is this bowls green, and to the east is a large open playing field, which belongs to ships and style high school. To the south is Pitway Avenue, which is already described as access, and the residential dwellings, which are semi-detached two-storey dwellings constructed out of red brick with natural slate roofing. I will show you photos beyond that. Beyond the Shipton Bosley Hub is an area of recreation, which is located just there. As indicated by the witness site plan, the proposal is for the stationary of a temporary modular building, which can be conditioned for its temporary use, to be used as a children's day nursery, D1 use, non-residential institutions. The hub is also as, uh, assessed as falling within the use class D1, and Children's Day Nursery also, also falls within the same use class. The area to be used comprises of a part of a redundant tennis court and is currently used for overspill car parking for the hub. The site will remain part of the hub. 
The modular building will equate to 144 square metres with a set length of 18 metres by 8 metres wide width, with an overall roof height of 3.2 metres. As witnessed by the elevational drawings, the modular building will be a standard rectangular shape with a flat roof. These are the views of the two nearest dwellings approximately 27 metres away at Pitway Avenue. Additionally, this is the access point going into the Sheldon Bosley hub. There is a sharp slope when coming into the Bosley hub. This is a view taken from just behind the recreational ground. This is where the application is proposed to be sited. And you can see there's an area of hard standing. And at the moment, it is used as car parking, as the caravan indicates. This is the same photo taken just off the green. Sorry, I'll go back taken just off the green. That's where the application is proposed to be sited. It's well screened on the back with a mature hedgerow where the high school is situated. This is the Sheldon Bosley hub and the associated hard standing. So the area in front of it is the car parking and it's roughly 2.5 meters to three stories high, constructed out of brick with white metal frame windows and doors. This is the bowls green to the west of the application. This is a recreational field behind the Sheldon Bosley hub. When looking down, you see what the indicated are in the top left hand corner. And these are examples of the temporary modular building which is being proposed to be instilled. The materials proposed are prefabricated modular building with steel frame coloured grey. As seen on the screen, um, detailing how the proposed modular building will look if the application is approved. The officer's recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. And we'll just move on to our first speaker, which is Councillor Brian Cooper from Ships and Onstad Town Council. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Okay. We've got three minutes. Would you like a warning shot after? No, I've timed it. It should be okay. Brilliant. That's what I'd like to hear. So far away when you're ready. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, Chair. Good evening to you all. Considering this application has proved to be difficult for Ships and Town Council, although we welcome the concept of additional nursery capacity locally, this must be balanced with the requirement for site safety, particularly relevant where vulnerable children are involved. We've reviewed the updated information provided, together with the responses from highways and environmental health. We intend to concentrate on the remaining primary area of concern, security. For the record, we agree with the comment made by the environmental health officer that it would be better if the building were to be moved towards the rear of the site, further away from the vehicular entrance to the hub, the space is there, so why not use it? All the regulatory requirements, including security guidelines for a new nursery, must be completed. So far, no evidence of this has been produced. According to the applicant, the nursery has to offer, and I quote, free flow where children have the choice to be indoor or outdoor, end of quote. It's intended to have an external play area at the front of the building. This must be inside a secure physical barrier. Currently, there are no plans to provide this. It only takes a momentary lapse of concentration and a child could easily stray into harm's way. Children of the toddler age don't know or understand fear. They're inquisitive and they're attracted to something new. They will take advantage of opportunities. All of us who are parents understand this. Do you remember Abigail Ray? She was the little two-year-old girl who, on the 28th of November 2002, slipped away unnoticed from the Ready Teddy Go nursery in Lower Brails. She was found one hour later having drowned in a nearby pond. How did this happen? A gate hadn't been bolted. Let me repeat, this application proposes no secure physical barrier at all around the external play area. We owe it to all the interested parties to ensure that any nursery provision puts the welfare of the children above all other considerations. This application in its present form isn't acceptable to us. If the security concerns can be satisfactorily addressed in any new application, we will be pleased to reconsider our position. Until then, we ask that consent for this proposal be refused. Thank you. Councillor Parry. Thank you. Good evening, Councillor Cooper. Evening. Um, and obviously you make some very valid points about security. But could you just explain what are your planning reasons for refusing? 
objection. Uh, this is this is our sole primary reason. It's the security. so it's it it's purely on security. Yes. So you don't have any planning reasons for objection. No, the the, the issues that uh, other came up were actually marginally addressed to some extent by the responses on well, site. Obviously, highways have, yes. do not have any. Um, no, they don't. Okay, so you don't have any planning reasons no. to object to this application. No. Thank you. Councillor O'Donnell. Good evening. Um, have the applicants liaised with you throughout the application? No. Okay. But apart from security, you have no other concerns? The, the whole town council has a concern because Braille's being very close to us, it's still fresh in the mind. Yeah, but apart from security, you have no, no other concerns? apart from security. Okay, thank of course, you. The, the, you may be mindful to put a condition on. Okay. Councillor Barnes. Looking at the map there, how busy is it along there? It's the hub is in constant use, um, but primarily the uh, drive part, the path to the left-hand side is primarily used. Where they propose to site the building isn't generally used at the moment at all, apart from an overspill car park. Okay. Yes, please, Councillor Brown. Uh, Good evening, Councillor. Good evening. I see at the back of the site, and what I'm looking at on my iPad and the officers as well, it obviously comes from Google Earth, so it's one of the same. There's 30 odd caravans at the back of the site. Well, if, you, if the officer brings it back up onto the screen. Is that a per permanent caravan site or is it just a rally? Or? It's a rally, an event. So it's a just a one off then? Yes. Okay, thanks. The, the hub itself is a um, social club, I guess. Yes. And are there, are there a lot of people who drive there, or is it sort of a, a most of the membership in walkable distance? Um, I would walk there because I live close by, but it is well used by uh, vehicles generally. And Following on from that, when does it normally open? Is it what time is the, the social club open? Um, is it mainly used at uh, evenings and weekends? Uh, that's correct, but you do get instances like uh, using the bowls club. They may have events during the day. Okay, thank you. Any further questions, sir? No, brilliant. Thank you, Kester Cooper. And we are our next speaker, which is Miss, Mrs. Cady Says. And apologies if I've missed. Oh, well done. Thank you. Excuse me, I am very nervous. Um, <laughs> so the You've got that, three minutes. Okay. So I am take sorry. your time. <laughs> okay. And could you put the speaker on? Yeah. And, and we'll give you a shout with 30 seconds to okay. go. So just take your time when you're ready, compose yourself. Okay. And far away. Okay, so when we originally put the plans in, the idea is that it's going to be run between the three of us. We actually, my mum has 25 years plus experience. She's a childminder, so she's already familiar with Ofsted and covers the regulations. My sister is also a nanny of nine years, so we are, you know, we would obviously comply with the Ofsted regulations. Um, the idea of the building is a temporary building until we uh, get established and we find grounds that we're able to buy, hopefully purchase and move to. Um, my apologies on the plans, we obviously haven't marked out uh, a secure area for the children to be. Um, that's, it would obviously be a secure place that we would, we would make it secure for the children. Um, most of it, I think, is already in the report that I've got because I've sent my business plan across um, to the case officer. Um, and I think that's it, really, hopefully. Any Sorry. questions? <laughs> Councillor O'Donnell, Councillor Parry. Good, e Good evening. You did very well. Um, <laughs> so, so nervous. Don't worry. Just to clarify then, there will be a secure area. It's just the plans were not detailed enough yes. to alleviate the fears of the town council. Because um, their main concern is, it appears to be security, and you're saying there will be a secure area, it just isn't clear from the plans yet. Yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Parry. I think Councillor O'Donnell's stolen my, my thunder, really. <laughs> but um, <laughs> would I be right in thinking, obviously, before you can actually operate a business as um, mm. 
uh, a, a children's area, it has to all be inspected to conform to Ofsted regulations, yes. which is what I, yeah. um, but it's nice to hear that that's yeah. confirmed by yourself. Yes, you would have to have Ofsted. Absolutely, yeah. thank you. I'll go. Councillor Brown, you No, I'm speak? just, the yeah, machine is still on. on. The machine is still on. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, I've got one slight question. Um, Councillor Barker has supported the application saying there's a de demonstrable need for a local nursery provision. Um, there's been a couple of letters of support as well. And could you just let us know, I know you mentioned the business plan, um, what market research and, uh, have you done? Um, when we um, started, we did look at how many applications had been approved and we knew that there was 426 houses that were due to be built in Shipston. Um, we also know the nursery that's in Shipston is at its max and there are waiting lists. Um, as I've said, my mum's a childminder and she has regular calls asking if she has spaces, which she doesn't, she is full. Um, we do attend toddler groups where we've asked um, parents that will be going back to work what their plans are and their thoughts. So we have tried to cover a few bases of why it's a need in Shipston. Brilliant. Thank you. Councillor Barnes. So what we're saying really is that you are going to put a fence up to secure the children. Yes. Now I have a nursery in my hair. That child, a child got out the other day and that's had the official proper agreed fence in. Okay. So I think it, it is, in planning terms, if it's not a metre high, it doesn't need planning permission. So that may be where the mix-up is, but you are going to have a proper fence all the way around it. Yes. Councillor Fielding? It may be a technical question, so I may get into trouble. Um, what sort of sanitary um, system is there going to be? Are there going to be toilets? And if there is a toilet... I, I think, um, yes. Councillor Fielding, I think I, that... I am well, I think it's not an appropriate question at the moment. It's, it's not a relevant planning one. I can understand where it's coming from, but I think we'll, we'll rule that one out of order. <laughs> you have to. You have to provide um, so many toilets to each children, so there would be that kind of facility, yes. You could say there might be a wee condition put on there at the end. <laughs> uh, sorry, Councillor O'Donnell. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, any further questions for the applicant? Thank you, Mrs. Says. You're free Thank to you. go. <laughs> Thank you. Right then, we'll go. We haven't got the ward member, so I won't forget Councillor Barker like I did Councillor O'Donnell. So we'll go on to points for clarification. Okay. As far as I'm concerned with the nursery we've got, it didn't have to have planning permission for the fence because it wasn't a metre high. It says two, when it gets to two metres, it has to have planning yep. permission. Is that correct? Let Cohen explain that. I think the planning manager will discuss the, the fence for us. Thank you. Yes, Chair. No, um, Councillor Barnes is correct. Means of enclosure, in fact, up to two metres high where you're not fronting a highway, um, can be undertaken under permitted development. Um, in this case, because obviously there are um, concerns regarding the lack of information relating to the outdoor play space, should you wish to move to recommendation, then we would um, recommend an additional condition uh, requiring submission of the details, location, size of the play area uh, and its means of enclosure just so that we can be, you can be absolutely certain that that's been achieved. So do you want me to propose that in the conditions if it was approved? No, she's advising, not, she's not telling me. Chair, no. this is advising. There's a difference between telling and advising. <laughs> Because we can't tell you anything, Councillor Barnes, so we'll, we'll try and advise you. <laughs> right, any p other further points of clarification? Councillor Brown? No. No? Right, are we happy to go to the debate? Who wants to start? Councillor Brown, thank you. I've been reasonably quiet tonight, haven't I, so. Chairman, there's a growing need in Shipston. It's a growing community. I've heard no reason to, to go against planning policy tonight at all. I'm happy that what Karen has said that we can adopt into the proposal as well as a condition that for detail, and I'm happy to propose that we go to the officer's recommendation with that condition. And in second of that, Councillor Parry? Very happy to second it. Um, I think 
whilst it's, it's unfortunate that the ward member's not here, she's clearly supported um, this application, um, which reflects the need, particularly with the increasing households. Um, it's, it looks a very good location, um, and there's no objection from highways. So um, I would be totally in support. And I think we also have to remember we are trying to support new businesses in the area as well. So um, it gets thumbs up all round for me. So I'm delighted to second it. Councillor Barnes. I'm very fully supportive of this family business. Um, and I'm sure that they will put a fence up. As I say, at my school, uh, a child got out of the nursery and uh, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but there was a great lot of civil servants and people coming around with paperwork and talking about this and talking about that. So if they're not secure, they'll get closed down and uh, I should be voting for the officer's recommendation. Good luck to them. Thank you very much. Um, the only thing I would add is I think it was uh, sensible of that ships are not allowed to come and raise their concerns because it has generated an extra condition just to make sure um, being dealing with such a sensitive subject so um, they've exercised their democratic right and it's generated an extra condition so I think that's, that's sensible so um, I think we should now go to the vote so all those in favour with, with the condition of course that we were advised by the planning manager not told unanimous chairman yes. thank you so this committee resolves to grant application 18-00425 FUL. Mr Chairman, are we going to start at six or quarter past? We're just that? about to go on the next item of the agenda, which is the start time of meetings. I will be good and be quiet then. So to, um, we would just like uh, the views of the members. Um, Councillor Parry, I, I believe you forgot to... I've, I've got real problems trying to get here for six, six o'clock. Um, whilst I work in Kyneton, because of the traffic coming in and out of Stratford, it takes me 40 minutes to get here from Kyneton, even if I leave at 5.30. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if it's moved back to six o'clock, then I might as well turn up for the second application because I will not be able to vote on the first application. And I'm sorry but I have to have a day job when I work on a Wednesday. It, it took me an hour to get in at 4 o'clock mm. this afternoon. Yeah. You need an Eastern Relief. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to be fair, Chairman, the reason for that is because Rao Live is on. It took me 35 minutes mm. to get in. It's a one-off this week. Normally you can get in at this time of night from uh, my direction, mm. which is the same direction as Peter. Can I go um, I would struggle to get here for 6 o'clock given different work commitments, and I come from, I very rarely come from just as local as Kyneton. Mm. So 6.15 is just about doable. Young, so I think I'm, I'm veering towards 6.15 as well from personal reasons, so. Yep. Yeah. So I'm happy to propose that we stay at 6.15. Uh, second to Councillor O'Donnell. All those in favour? Five Five. Yeah. Any against? Any upset? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we will continue. Continue. Right. Right. Come on. Yes. Right. We'll move on to item number seven. Any items of urgent business? Right, thank you very much. I will now close this meeting at 7.22. Thank you.